on the forum, a uh, new member came up with uh, some questions about how to double-sided, do double-sided milling on a guitar neck, and I thought that would be a really great real-world uh, challenge for milling, um, as opposed to the synthetic bowl that I did. So here it is imported. I'm in CNC mode. Everything's disabled, defaults. Um, when I look at this, the first thing that I see is that there's an angle here um, on the import, and the way we can solve this in Kirimoto is to select the part and then control click or command click the face you want flat. And flattening that looks like it flattens this as well. So I'm gonna do some just testing passes on roughing to see what we get here. Eighth inch end mill is selected. I'm just gonna enable it. Um, the Z bottom is artificially high right now because I was doing double-sided milling before. I'm gonna leave it just to see what happens. So I'm gonna go and do a slice on this to see what we get, just a, a rough pass. And here we see um, a good sort of cutout here. We can go into single slice mode and sort of go through and look at what we've got. And then we can go into preview mode. And in preview mode, we can see the, the pathing that's selected by Kirimoto for how to cut this out. So when looking at this, the first thing that I want to do is actually clear the top of this. And the way you do that in Kirimoto is to offset the stock by some height. So in this case, I'm gonna add a millimeter to the top, which lifts the part off the, the bed a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into the limits and I'm going to set the Z offset to one, pushing the part back down into the stock. And now when I slice it, you'll notice that it will clear the top of the part here. So now we'll have a nice clean top to this part when it's being cut. Uh, the second thing that I wanna do is think about the order of cutting. Um, so I've got it flattened off. Do I wanna cut this side first um, or do I wanna cut this side first? I don't know if it actually matters, but I think in this case, if we cut this side first, then with this side being down next, we have the end pieces sitting on the bed. And I think that's sort of advantageous for the final uh, cutting pass. So I'm gonna leave it in this mode for the first pass of the cut. And the second thing we wanna do is uh, create, um, like with the other double-sided video, um, we need to create drilling registration marks on, the, in this case, the x-axis. So it would go here and here. In order to make room for that, I have to extend the stock width offset. So if I do like 50 in this case, and this is enabled, I'm gonna turn roughing off so we can see what that looks like. So that's gonna give us registration marks here and here. And um, it's set to an eighth inch. We could set it to probably a quarter inch, depends on what your, um, what uh, end mill you're gonna use for that operation. Anyway, I'm gonna just sort of um, leave that as a separate pass, sorry. That, clicking it randomly here like a monkey. Um, I'm gonna turn that off just to show you that's the sort of the first operation that you're gonna have to do. Um, maybe get a little extra space on the sides. Um, so let's go back to the roughing pass. Um, the other thing we wanna do in the roughing pass probably at this stage is determine how deep we wanna cut on the first pass. Um, and that's going to determine how much is left for the second pass. And I think what we're gonna to wanna to do is leave tabs on the ends of the part here and then we're gonna cut through those when we flip it over. And so we'll go in and create some tabs. Let's enable that, let's set it to two, and let's make sure the height of the tabs comes up high enough on the part to go into the area that we're cutting. So let's just set that to 10, and let us enable this and see what happens uh, with the cutout. So here we see that the tab is actually going almost all the way to the top. That means the second half pass has to go uh, down to the bottom. We don't need the tab to be that high because we're offsetting the bottom. We're only cutting down that deep, which is set by this Z bottom limit. Uh, we'll clean that up in the second pass. Uh, the most important thing is to make sure that as part of this, that we're going down below the lowest part we want to cut here in the middle. And I think we achieved that. So let's try a tab height of five in this case, uh, which is from the bottom of the part that we're cutting. And that gives us this little hair. That means that it's going to be secured in the block for the flip. Um, so that looked pretty good. There's one other thing that I want to do here, and that is we have curved surfaces right here. And I think it would be really nice to actually use some XY linear finishing to um, make that look better. So let's just disable roughing for a second and let's play with contouring. 
Let's enable those passes. Uh, the contouring should probably not use a, bit, a ball mill. Let's use a uh, end mill for that eighth inch square. So let's go in here and see what this looks like. This is going to be our contouring pass. Now remember we're cleaning off the top, so this part right here, we probably don't need to clean it off again. Um, and so what we can do in contouring mode is say curves only, and that's going to limit it to the areas of the neck that are actually curved. And let's see what that looks like. Uh, slicing, slicing. Uh, it might take a little bit longer because of that. Here we go. So this is actually uh, radius here, which is why we see this. And you see that it's limiting the cutting area to only the curved areas of this neck. That's going to give us a nice, clean, uh, curved finish on that part that can be sanded down. You can The step over is pretty aggressive. The tool is pretty small. Obviously, you can tweak all those things. And so to put it all together, you would, um, if you're using the same tool in this case, um, enable the roughing pass and the contouring pass on this side. First you would output the uh, drilling holes as one G-code, then you would output these two things as a second set of G-code. Um, and because we're limiting the cut depth here, um, and this half of the neck is going to stay mounted in the stock, we don't have to worry about the cut order or it cutting through. So when we actually go through and do a preview of this and go to the top, we'll see that we cut down the roughing and then we have all these passes for the cleanup area down here. And that's going to give us a really nice side for this. And the next thing we're going to do is just flip it over like that. Um, I am going to disable the contouring passes and just see what roughing gives us. Now also because we have the tabs, we want to cut through them. I'm going to turn off the tabs. Um, that's going to let it completely cut through. Um, just thinking out loud here. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I do. Let's just see what happens. Um, because this has flat parts on the bed down here, we can actually tape the part down with the double-sided tape and not worry about the tabs and cut out a clean part. And I did that with the bowl, and I think we can do that here as well. So let's preview the order of what this looks like. This cut order looks like this, goes down, and we are good. So that is going to work. And let's turn this off and look at what contouring looks like. I think that we only need to do uh, Y contouring for this because it, the contour is only in this direction. This is the Y axis. Let's see what that looks like. I think curves only is still enabled. Yes, it is. So we're going to see that it only, why did it do that? Oh, so because this is, the preview is halfway through. Remember that from the last time. So um, our contouring is just going to finish these little bits right here which is great. So um, if I just go back and enable ru the, con the roughing and with the roughing and contouring, I slice this thing and this is going to give us the G code for the, for the flipped part. Um, let's see what happens. Yeah, that's good. Let's do the preview. Go back and look at the order of things. So it's going to step down with the roughing and then it's going to go through. I can turn off the roughing if I want. No, I can't actually in preview mode. See what we're doing here. I think that that'll be, that'll be good. So we have three um, uh, G-code exports that we're going to accomplish. We're going to start with this, um, enable registration marks on the Y-axis, and do just that. I'm sorry, I lied. We're going to do that on the X-axis. We're going to run that as one set of G-code that we're going to export. Then we're going to disable that, go back and enable roughing and contouring and we're going to slice and export this set of G-code. We're going to run it um, with all the tools still registered with this is 00. zero. And if you're wondering how we know that, under Setup Preferences, we'll turn on the Show Origin. And we'll see the origin is down here. So 00, zero is going to be here. Once you set it, you're going to leave it the same for all three G-code passes. So that's the second G-code. And then we're going to flip it over um, and disable the X-pass and that will be our third set of G-code, export it, and then run those three. And I think that will give you the guitar neck that you're looking for. Um, pretty clean, pretty simple. Um, you know, don't forget to level it. The first step was to level this. I think that makes a lot of the stuff cleaner. You could do it without the leveling, but I think the leveling as the first step is actually going to make that work out really well. So please comment uh, in the video below or join the forums, which is where this came in at forum.grid.space 
and uh, check out the conversation over there. Thanks for your time. Hope this was helpful.